Welcome to my series of videos on mathematics for economists here at Linear Algebra. And in this video, I would like to talk about basis change. Let's consider this uh, matrix that I wrote down here, 5 minus 1 minus 1, 5 times 1 half. And if you watch my videos on uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, you can quickly convince yourself uh, that this matrix has uh, two distinct eigenvalues, which are given by 2 and 3, with corresponding eigenvectors 3, 1, 1, 1, and V2, minus 1, and 1. And so we find the uh, eigenvalue decomposition. which, remember, is the factorization of the matrix as um, the product of three matrices, P being a matrix of full rank, which then therefore has an, uh, has an inverse matrix, P inverse, and the sandwich product, which has a diagonal matrix, D in the middle, which has uh, a zero of diagonal entries, and the eigenvalues on the diagonal. The invertible matrix P consists of the eigenvectors in the columns. And therefore, uh, P is given by 1, 1, minus 1, and 1 in the columns. Yeah? Um, P inverse, we can quickly convince ourselves uh, by watching my video, or maybe this is, a, this is an operation that you're easily familiar with, uh, we convince ourselves is this, this matrix uh, where essentially only the, the minus sign switches along the off diagonal and we multiply by one half. Convince yourself by multiplying P with P inverse to obtain the identity. So now let's see, um, uh, let's consider a given vector in R2, say x is in R2 and given by the entries 1 and 3. If I multiply this vector with a, a vector y given by a times x, and this now is 1 half times the given matrix 5 minus 1 minus 1 5 times 1 and 3 times x and this is 1 half times uh, 5 minus 3 is 2 and minus 1 plus 15 is 14 times 1 half is 1 and 7 okay so a represents a linear mapping um, that satisfies here in this little example f of the vector 1, 3 is vector 1, 7. All right. Now, <clears throat> x and y are, of course, given in standard coordinates. What do I mean by that? I mean that x is 1 and 3 is 1 times the first standard basis vector, 1 and 0, plus 3 times the second standard basis vector, 0 and 1. And let me write E1 and E2 for these two standard basis vectors. And analogously, y equal to 1 and 7 is 1 times the first standard basis vector plus 7 times the, standard, uh, the second standard basis vector. 
Now, since the two eigenvectors, v1 and v2, are linearly independent, they form a basis of R2. And this means we can also express x and y as linear combinations of v1 and v2. Or in other words, we can use v1 and v2 as a basis, or still in other words, we can use v1 and v2 as a coordinate system in which we can express x and y. So for example, x can relatively easily seen, so this is in standard coordinates 1 and 3, can relatively easily be seen to be 2 times the first eigenvector of a plus 1 time the second eigenvector of a. 2 minus 1 is 1 and 2 plus 1 is 3. So if we agree that S, capital S, denotes the standard basis, yeah, here in R2, so the first two standard basis vectors. And if we uh, also agree that F, capital F, denotes another basis, which is given by the two uh, eigenvectors, And if we agree that we define a coordinate function, these are the coordinates with respect to the standard basis of the point x, which then just is x, which would be 1 and 3. And in the same fashion, we denote the f-coordinates of the point x, which are the linear coefficients in the representation of x as the linear combination of the two basis vectors v1 and v2. This would be 2 and 1, yeah? the two coefficients. Then we can ask ourselves, is there a linear mapping that I can feed the standard coordinates and that returns the f coordinates. In other words, is there a linear mapping that if I use the vector 1 and 3 as an argument, I get the vector 2 and 1 as the function value? We can consider the geometric situation. So here I have drawn the vector x in a Cartesian coordinate system. And the vector x is given by the entries 1 and 3 on the x and y axis respectively. The x axis is given by multiples of the first standard basis vector, r being just a, just a real number. Yeah, so these are all, uh, all the values on the x axis. And the y-axis is given by multiples of the second standard basis vector. With this standard Cartesian coordinate system, I represent x in the usual fashion that we are used to. Um, I look at the point that is given by uh, the x-coordinate 1 and the y-coordinate 3. the blue coordinate system, and I'm not sure if your video will resolve this color very well. Um, this coordinate system here 
this blue, okay? The blue coordinate system are the eigenvalues of the matrix A. So you can see that linear multiples of R of the vector v1, r times v1, are multiples of the vector of 1 and 1. So the vector of 1 and 1 in standard coordinates is, of course, the vector that extends from the origin to this point. And multiples are the line that I have indicated here. The other axis consists of linear multiples of the vector minus 1 and 1, which of course is this vector here. And now I can express any point in R2. So for example, the vector x in coordinates of this new basis and coordinates of these new bases I have I have drawn here for unit 1 and unit 2 and here for unit 1 and now you see that the coordinates of x in this new coordinate system are 2 and 1. Note that the lengths of the units are not the same. Yeah. So the length if, if, if this here is is um, uh, uh, is one unit um, in, in in the original Cartesian coordinate system with the standard basis vectors, then the length of one unit in the in the new coordinate system is uh, the square root of two by Pythagoras. Yeah. But other than that, I can of course express the point x or if I am so inclined the point uh, the point y um, in both coordinate systems. And now again I want to find out uh, how I can find the matrix, the linear mapping, that given the standard coordinates, which are these, returns the new coordinates, which are these. Yeah. Okay, so let's figure that out. Of course I can also write y, which is the vector 1 and 7, in standard coordinates. Okay, so this is also Cs of y. I can also write this vector in coordinates of the new basis, which is given by the eigenvectors, and you can quickly convince yourself that this is uh, 4 times v1 plus 3 times v2. Yeah? 4 minus 3 is 1, and 4 plus 3 is 7. And so the, the f coordinates of y are therefore 4 and 3. All right. Again, the question, is there a mapping from the s-coordinates or the standard coordinates to the f-coordinates? In order to answer this question, I'm going to look at the f coordinates of the standard basis. All right, so the first standard basis vector is, as you can quickly convince yourself, 1 half times v1 minus one half times v2. And thus, the f coordinates of e1 are given by one half 
and minus one half. One half minus minus one half is plus one, and one half minus one half is zero. The second standard basis vector is given by one half times v one plus one half times v two. One half minus one half is zero, and one half plus one half is one. And therefore, I have the f coordinates of e2 given by one half and one half. And now I define a basis change matrix. A basis change matrix, and I call it P. And it goes from S coordinates to F coordinates. By this I mean that if I multiply from the right the, the s-coordinates, it's going to return the f-coordinates. I define this matrix by stacking the f-coordinates of the standard basis into the columns. So I stack the images of the images because I want this matrix to return f coordinates yeah so so the that is if I multiply uh, from the from the right with the first standard basis vector I'm going to get as the image the f coordinates of the first standard basis vector if I multiply from the right with the standard with the second standard basis vector i'm going to get the f coordinates of the second standard basis vector so i take the images of the basis the old basis then the columns and this is as we've now seen one half and minus one half and one half and one half Now I can quickly check. I want to have that if I multiply this matrix with the standard coordinates of x, so this is one half, one half, minus one half, one half, and the standard coordinates of x are one and three. Okay, um, one half times one plus one half times uh, three, that's one half times four, and that is two. Minus one half times one, minus one half, plus three half, one half times three, is two half or one. And this is indeed, these are indeed the f coordinates of x. And if I multiply this matrix by the s coordinates, the standard coordinates of y, I would like to have the f coordinates of the f coordinates of y. So if I multiply one half, one half, minus one half, and one half by the standard coordinates, I want to get the f coordinates, and I have um, sorry. This is not one. Uh, I have uh, one times one half plus uh, seven times one half is eight halves, so that's four. And minus one half plus seven times one half is six times one half, and that is three. And four and three are indeed the f coordinates of y. So it works for these two points, but of course it also works in general. Um, so now we have found the matrix that takes S coordinates and returns F coordinates. What about 
the other way around. What is the basis change matrix from F to S that takes F coordinates and returns S coordinates? Well, the matrix that we defined by putting the images of the old bases into the columns must be invertible because it consists of basis vectors and so it must have full rank. images of basis vectors, that is coordinates of basis vectors under a basis, but that again uh, must be a basis vector and so it must have full rank. And the defining characteristic of this basis change matrix from S to F was that I get F coordinates of any point X if I multiply this matrix from the right by standard coordinates of X. And we have that the matrix is invertible. And so if I now left multiply by the inverse, I get PSF inverse times PSF. So that's the identity. The identity times the standard coordinates are just the standard coordinates. And so I see that if I want to left multiply f coordinates to a matrix in order to obtain <clears throat> s coordinates I have to invert the matrix PSF and so the matrix that gives me the the inverse mapping is the inverse of the original basis change matrix <coughs> And we can quickly uh, convince ourselves that the inverse is given by 1, minus 1, 1, 1. And if we check if this works, oh, so this is, this is the basis change from F to S. And if this works out for f coordinates of x, then the product of 1, minus 1, 1, and 1 with the f coordinates of x, which were 2 and 1, should return 1 and 3. And indeed it does. These are the standard coordinates. And if the left the, excuse me, the right multiplication of the f coordinates of y, which are four and three with this matrix, returns one and seven, and indeed it does, then I also get the s coordinates of y. So we see that these are the mechanics of the basis change. And this is the linear algebra expression of this geometric picture. Thanks for watching.